you want to be over six feet tall? Do you want muscles bigger than the country of Iceland? Do you want a glorious handlebar mustache? And most importantly, do you want a receding hairline? Whoa, that's never growing back. It's never growing back. If you answered yes to any of those questions, well then boy, I have the game for you. Legends of WrestleMania came out in 2009, and at first glance it was THQ giving the fans something new and original. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. To quickly strike your opponent, tap the square button. Tap the square button. Despite the fact it had been done three times prior. <laughs> Anyway, at the very least, it was something different in an ocean full of SmackDown vs. Raws, which at the time was more than a welcome change. Oh, no. No. <laughs> With this game having the main appeal of being able to play as a 500 pound alcoholic Frenchman and fight the giant egg shaped man using the devastating art of tickling. <laughs> It was a game crammed full of nostalgia, made to cater to fans of late 80s and early 90s wrestling. Wow, that is delicious. Finally, some good fucking food. Featuring iconic wrestlers like Bret Hart. Would it be alright if I kept this portrait? To remind me of better times. Why would I want a picture of a pitiful pencil neck geek? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Here's a tube of toothpaste. GoPro with Oral-B Pro Expert. The Rock, and of course, Hulk Hogan. I do not have a 10 inch penis. Also right, hold up. Who keeps on giving this man a decent hairline? Have you not seen Hulk Hogan? The man's head looks like a bird's nest. Long story short, the game was a way for fans to play as legendary wrestlers at WrestleMania. I mean, clues kind of in the name. Given the player the ability to recreate classic matchups like Hulk Hogan vs The Ultimate Warrior, The Rock vs The Rattlesnake, Society vs The Joker, it's simple. We killed the society. And all jokes aside, one of the most highly praised WrestleMania matches of all time, Undertaker versus a large man in a naked hairy skin tone bodysuit. What the fuck? And to be fair, the game got some fairly decent reviews when it came out. Like Game Informer gave it a very generous 8.5 out of 10, saying one of the best aspects of the game is how much research it went into making the presentation look historically accurate. And uh I just, I just couldn't agree more. Nah, in all fairness, there's a lot of stuff in this game which looks extremely well polished. Like it's abundantly clear how much attention to detail has been in recreating each classic WrestleMania venue to look exactly like their real life counterparts. Emulating that classic 90s WWF look and feel really well, along with some lovely MS Paint graphics, and of course, Howard Finkel. At least I think that's who it's supposed to be. Looks a bit sus to me though. As always, the entrances and winning animations are, uh, good. Sure. We saw this, right? <laughs> like, what else you expect me to say? At this point, THQ were popping out a new wrestling game every single year, and it seemed they pretty much nailed how to create well done entrances and winning animations. Well, for the most part. <laughs> However, something I did notice was when it comes to the actual wrestlers in the game, they definitely have a much more, uh, exaggerated look to them. But that picture's kind of freaking me out. He's got a great body. He's so big. <laughs> He's so massive. Hence why Hogan's been given regrowth for men and other wrestlers have been supplied a strict diet of a whole cow per day with a healthy glass of steroids to wash it down. I forgot the- Steroids. As you can probably tell, most of the in-game models here have a lot more chiseled and well-defined physiques. Meaning guys like King Kong Bundy, Yokozuna, and Andre the Giant have biceps which could feed a family of four for six months. Now I don't really mind the action figure-esque design choices, but I do think it kinda clashes with a somewhat realistic look to everything else. But hey, don't take my word for it, let's see what Ted DiBiase has to say. Smash, did you ever expect something like this in the future? No, no, it, it's it's a thrill, and, and I'll be honest with you, uh, the video games and and, 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 and... Exactly. Also, there's a few things which annoy me a little. Like how regardless of what belt you have on the line during a ladder match, it will always be the WWE Championship you unhook at the end, which just utterly breaks my immersion. Oh, and this isn't so much a criticism, but the way some of the wrestlers look on the matchup screens is just, uh... Absolutely astonishing. There. That's a look I was looking for. Overall though, it looks pretty good. As long as you don't mind the crowd looking like a bunch of deranged serial killers. Oh. <laughs> and now I feel like it's an appropriate time for me to make a little confession. <clears throat> I fucking hate this game. Okay, sure, it doesn't look half bad, but holy shit, the gameplay is so excruciatingly dull that I genuinely think I would have a more satisfying experience slamming my head into a wall. First off, the speed of the game has been significantly slowed down, to the point where all the wrestlers move with about the same pace and vigor of a fucking Minecraft zombie. I gotta get a closer look at this fucking thing. 
I mean, I get it. In terms of realism, this is pretty accurate to how wrestling was back in the early 90s. Like, it's fairly apparent these guys weren't exactly Olympic sprinters. Are you okay, honey? But the game is so agonizingly slow, moving at a glacial pace, it makes it painful to play. The movement is also extremely clunky and stiff, making it a challenge to just reach your opponent, never mind actually wrestle them. But in all fairness, half the wrestlers here do have a bone structure made up of 60% metal and 40% cocaine. Oh, and the cherry on top of this beautiful Sunday, the camera isn't fixed to one position, meaning it won't stay still, follows you around the ring, and cuts to completely different angles after you hit a move, which can really disorientate you. The control scheme here has also been heavily stripped down to the bare minimum, which I think is to make the game feel more arcade-like and accessible to a larger audience. But, much like the rest of the game, the controls are absolute trash. The core gameplay is literally built on just pressing a combination of the four face buttons and the analog stick over and over again, which as you can tell doesn't exactly give the game a very solid foundation. It just becomes so mind-numbingly repetitive with a huge lack of variety to what you actually do during a match, cause the game ultimately just boils down to you punching your opponent a few times, doing a quick couple of grapples, then suddenly you've got a finisher, won the match, and realised you've wasted all your money. Stunningly, the control scheme also makes some simple aspects of the game extremely frustrating to try and do, like attempting to pick someone up or even running around, which can obviously be um, ever so slightly annoying for players. The game also implements a kind of move tier list. No, not like that. Get out of here. Basically, throughout a match, you can reach different levels for gaining momentum, with the different levels slightly changing up the moves you can do. Which, you know, seems like a pretty decent idea. But then you realise the majority of moves just don't feel impactful at all, are all super basic, and the in-ring action is so stiff and robotic, I genuinely felt like I would have more fun fighting an android. My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. And I get it, cause, well, old wrestlers. I've fallen. And I can get up! But only having basic moves mixed in with a sluggish pace makes the game incredibly boring to play, and a lot of time you see the same moves constantly anyway. Not to mention the strikes sound like you're punching a wet slice of ham. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't stop there, because the controls aren't the only new thing in this game, because THQ figured it would be a good idea to add in quick time events for practically everything. Isn't, isn't that fun? No. From basic sequences to every single finisher, the game is absolutely infested with these quick time events. How? Now in all fairness, they don't look bad, a lot of them actually look fairly decent, having some unique sequences and move combinations, but they happen far too frequently and really break up any possible flow you can get in a match. Like maybe it's just me, but spending 50% of a wrestling game pressing one single button isn't my idea of a good time. Then again, my idea of a good time might be slightly different than yours. Plus, if we're honest with ourselves, no quick time event will ever be as good as the ones featured in the legendary Spider-Man 3. Well, that was fun. <laughs> now, not to be completely negative, there is still good stuff here. You just have to dig through all the bad stuff to find it. Like, managers actually help you out during matches, there's a few unique environmental attacks, and there's some really cool double team moves in tag team matches. But it's hard to enjoy all that when the rest of the game feels like it's attempting to run you over. Oh. Even the different match types aren't that exciting to play as they all end up becoming master controller to win. The gameplay just feels so restrictive not giving you any real freedom during matches, and overall it's just a bit of a mess. So yeah, that 8 out of 10 does seem pretty re However, the game isn't entirely bad as the creation mode is still pretty good. Much like any other wrestling game that came out around this time, you have a ton of variety and dozens of stupid options to choose from when it comes to creating your own... Uh, legend? Hey! Massive legend here! So with that in mind, I went to the drawing board creating yet another beautiful wrestler which somehow ended up being an e-boy. I mean, just look at this man. You're lying if you say you haven't seen him on TikTok. He's got the latest designer clothes, some great tattoos, and of course he's got his own wave house mask. Now naturally, after creating this beautiful specimen, I was looking forward to throwing him into a lovely career or season mode. But to my absolute horror, this game doesn't have one. <laughs> But no need to fear, because this game does have some modes, they just aren't that good. The main one being WrestleMania Tour Mode, where you can relive, rewrite, or redefine classic WrestleMania matches, like uh, King Kong vs Godzilla. Basically this means you can either play these matches accurately to how they turned out in real life, change the results so the loser becomes the winner, or you can redefine the match by having them wrestle in the never or some shit, I, I don't know. This mode is uh... 
it's, it's fine. I mean, it has some cool aspects, like some nicely done hype packages and cutscenes placed throughout matches, but then the gameplay rears its ugly head, and you remember, it still sucks. The gameplay just makes it not worth playing for all these matches, which is actually kind of a shame because there has been a good deal of work gone into this mode, which ultimately just gets thrown straight out the window. The other mode is Legend Killer mode, which sees you take control of a local wrestling fan, as he hunts down elderly wrestlers, slaughtering them and collecting all their false hips in order to wield the Infinity Gauntlet. Or at least I wish it was that interesting. What you actually do here is take on 10 wrestlers in a gauntlet style matchup where if you win, you gain the coveted title of greatest wrestler of all time. So after seeing that, I decided to move Chad Bradison III away from TikTok and into the world of pro wrestling. I mean, just look at this man. If those moves don't scream legend, I don't know what will. We took on all comers in this gauntlet match, from Scary Terry, the French, and even fighting The Rock with our bare hands. But one by one, they all fell down. Absolutely nothing could stop good old Chad, and anyone who stood in our way received a swift claw to the eye for their troubles. Uh, are claws legal in wrestling matches? Oh, well fuck me. We beat everyone placed in our path, leaving behind a trail of nothing but destruction. Three, take the Snake Roberts win! <clears throat> Let's just, uh... Ignore that one. Then came our final challenge in the form of an angry, drunk, bald man. However, that was no problem to good old Chad because after he pinned him one, two, three, he sent this man to Alcoholics Anonymous and also paid for a hair transplant. Wow, what a saint. Anyway, after going through all of that, Chad was awarded a, uh, a nice plaque. <coughs> And that was it. Y yeah, as you can probably tell, this mode isn't good either. It's incredibly repetitive, offers no real incentive to play it more than once, and I hate to beat a dead horse, but gameplay equals bad, meaning Legend Killer mode just isn't a fun experience throughout. But in case you somehow manage to enjoy this mode, you fucking psychopath. Well then, it's your lucky day, because to beat the game, you'll have to play through six more of the fucking things. Right, I know I've been incredibly negative throughout this entire review, but the thing is, the game actually does a lot of stuff right. The graphics, for the most part, are pretty great for the time, the creation mode is as good as ever, and the WrestleMania mode has some interesting features. But then the game just dives headfirst off a cliff, with gameplay so bad and painfully slow, I feel like I've aged at least 50 years just playing it. It's just so boringly dull, I'm struggling to type stuff up for this, I just don't know what else to say about it, then it's boring. Overall though, bearing all that in mind, yeah, I give this an 8 out of 10 too.